In this video, we're going to focus on solving radical equations. Now, radical equations are equations that are have some sort of radical symbol in them. And I say radical because when we are talking about the radical symbol, if there's no number up here as an index or number on the outside, it's implied to be or understood to be the square root symbol. But we have all sorts of other roots that we can take, such as the cube cubed root, the fourth root, and so on. So this is about solving any type of equation with this symbol in it. And something to note is when you're solving radical equations to the nth root, or any root, so to speak, if that index out here, if that is an even number, then all of the solutions that you just solved may not be solutions to the original equation, which is an indication that you're going to need to check your solutions. So let's start off by solving this equation right here. I have uh, the square root of x plus 10 is equal to x minus 2. Now when we have the square root here, again it's an understood 2, in order to get rid of the radical sign, then we are going to, in this case, square both sides. If this was the cubed root, I would cube both sides. If it was the fourth root, I would take the fourth power of both sides, so that's how you do that. Now, when I take the, uh, when I square a square root, it just gives me what's underneath that radical sign as x plus 10. And on the right hand side over here, we have a binomial that we are going to be squaring. So we've done this in a previous uh, lecture, but we're going to practice our little um, quickly squaring this special binomial. So we take the first term and we're going to square it. So it's the first term, oops, let's bring it back. It's the first term squared. Then we're going to take the product of these two numbers, or, which would be negative 2x, and double it. So that's going to be 4x, and we take the last term here and square it. So you square the first, double the product, square the last. Again, square the first, double the product, square the last, and you get this trinomial right here. Here we have an equation that is quadratic in nature, and we can solve it using um, all of the methods we've learned before. We're going to gather everything up on the same side and then try to factor it. So I have 0, and I am going to uh, subtract x to the right-hand side, and I get minus 5x. And I'm going to subtract 10 over here, and I get minus 6. Here is our trinomial that we're going to now see if we can factor using trial and error. And this one factors pretty easily because the second sign is negative. I know I have a positive and a negative sign down here in my parentheses. Also, since the second sign is negative, I'm looking for factors of 6 that subtract to give me 5. So the factors of 6 that subtract to give me 5 are 1 and 6. So I'm going to need, in order to get a negative 5, a negative 6 and a positive 1 because that, now we're going to check that out, that middle term. So this is a negative 6 plus 1 gives me the negative 5. So I have everything in here uh, as it should because I wanted to check that middle term. Now that we have this trinomial factored, we apply that zero root property we've been uh, really working on and each of these factors are set equal to zero and we solve each of these equations. So you can see here that x is equal to a negative 1, and over here x is equal to a positive 6. Now because we are taking the square root, we need to uh, check our solutions. So we're going to, we can do this algebraically, meaning I can take these numbers and I can plug them in, oops, I could plug them into the original problem up here. Check to make sure that the left-hand side was equal to the right-hand side um, and verify my solutions. Or we're going to try this using the calculator. So uh, we're going to check on our calculator. So I want you to get your graphing calculator out and let me show you how we're going to do this on the calculator. We are going to let this side of the equation be a y1 and this side of the equation be y2. And those are the two separate equations that we're going to put in the uh, y equals portion of our graph. 
Now you can see that I already have that done right here in my graphing calculator. So on Y1 I have the left hand side of our equal sign and on Y2 I have the right hand side of our equal sign. Now when I graph this, let me hit graph, you can see the blue line that's appearing right there is the square root of X plus 10 and the red line that is appearing there is um, the other side of the equation which was x plus 2. Now where these two um, graphs intersect, and you can see that they're only intersecting at one point, where these two graphs intersect is actually the solution to my problem. Since they're only intersecting at one point, I know I have an extraneous solution. Remember we solved it for two numbers and only one of those numbers is valid. So I want to show you a trick using your calculator now that we already have the equations put in to be able to quickly tell whether or not um, the numbers we solved for are solutions and it has to do with our table setting. I want you to go and I want you to change your table setting. So I'm going to do second window and this has a table set up up here. And what I want you to change it to is I want your independent variable to be set to ask. Okay, that means that it's going to be waiting on you to give it an input before it actually does anything. Mine's already set that way, but I want yours to be set independent to ask. Now let's go to my table function, which is at second graph. And I have a bunch of numbers in here and I'm going to get rid of them by hitting the delete button. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of all of these numbers real fast by hitting delete. Okay, I got rid of my numbers and you can do the same thing by getting rid of your values by hitting delete. Now we solved for two numbers. We said that x is equal to a negative 1. So it, what happens if x is equal to negative 1 here? Well, for the right hand side of my equation, if x is equal to negative 1, I get 3. And on the left hand side, I would get negative 3. Because these two numbers are not the same values, then negative 1 is not a solution. Watch what happens when I put the number 6, because that was the other number that we solved for. When I put 6 in here, the, the, the value is going to be exactly the same for both my um, sides of my equation. So if I put 6 into one side of my equation, I get 4. If I put 6 into the other side of my equation, I get 4. Because both sides of my equation would now be equal to the same number, that means 6 is the only solution to this problem. And our graph, if I go back to our graph, our graph supports that. Notice here, if you were to look, the, uh, if we were to um, figure out what this point was of the intersection, this is actually intersecting at the point positive 6, or 6 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis. So 6 is, in other words, 6 is the only solution to this problem. So we're just going to get rid of that one, and that is our solution to the problem. Okay, so it's important to check it all, and the reason that happens is because because we're squaring our our equation, we can be introducing values that do not actually um, occur on our um, on our equations. Okay, let's try this one over here. This is a little bit more involved. Notice in this particular equation. I have two radicals on the same side equal to a number. So I have three terms in here. What we want to start by doing, and this is a repetitive process, what we're going to do first is I want to isolate one of the radicals. So I'm going to take this number here or this term here and I'm going to get it by itself by adding this second term to the right hand side. So I have the square root of 2x minus 3 is equal to 1 plus the square root of x minus 2 by just taking this term and moving it to the right. Now we want to get rid of the radical sign and when we take, uh, when we do that, remember before we squared both sides, that's going to get rid of the radical sign on the left hand side. It's not going to be perfect but it's what we're going to start with. So when I square the, the left hand side, I end up with 2x minus 3. 
On the right hand side, when we square this binomial, it's the same process as squaring this binomial. Okay, it just is a little bit uglier, but it is the same process. So what did we do? We square the first term, so that's one squared. We double the product. Well, one times this is just the square root of x minus two and double that, so that's two. So we have two times the square root of x minus two. And then we square the last. What happens when I square the last term? We just get what's underneath, so that would be plus x minus two. Okay, so that is going to be, allow us to just look at this single radical that's left in my equation once I simplify all of this. So I am going to get, now, I am going to get this term by itself on the right hand side and I'm going to move all of these terms over here to the left. So when I take this x and I subtract it over here to the left hand side, I get 2x minus x which is just an x. So that x is gone. Now what happens to this 1 minus 2? Well 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So if I add negative 1, if I move negative 1 to the left hand side, that becomes plus 1. So this is negative 3 plus 1, which would be negative 2. Now I did a bunch of that in my head, so make sure you check my math and I did it right. The left hand side is x minus 2, the right hand side is now 2 times the square root of x minus 2. We only have one radical in this entire um, equation, and so now I can square both sides. So I'm going to square the left, and I'm going to square the right. The left-hand side, remember, this is just squaring a binomial. So we have the first term squared, double the product. So this is 2x doubled would be 4x, so minus 4x, and square the last, which is a plus 4. On the right hand side over here, I'm going to square the 2 on the outside, and when I square this portion of it, it just brings me x minus 2. So we've, we're kind of making this a lot simpler as we move through this. Now let's distribute the 4, the four and get rid of the parentheses so we can collect our like all of our terms on the left hand side. So this becomes 4x minus 8. When we move our, all of our terms over here to the left hand side so we can set it equal to zero, I get x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to zero. Here I have a trinomial, three terms that I can use trial and error with to be able to factor. So my second term is positive. Because the second term is positive, I'm going to have two of the same signs down here, and they're both going to be negatives. I also knew, know I'm looking for the factors of 12 that add to give me 8, because that looks like an addition symbol. That's how I remember this. Factors of 12 that add to give me 8. Well, that's a 6 and 2. Minus 6 minus 2. And of course we have our x's here. So minus 2 minus 6 gives me the minus 8 that I'm looking for. So I have two factors that I can now set equal to 0 and solve using our zero root property. And I find out that x could be a 6 and a 2. Let's use our calculator to be able to check and see if both of these solutions are valid. So in my calculator, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to enter this whole side over here on y1 and this over here on y2. Okay, so let's all do that in our calculators. Okay, so here I have the two sides of the functions the left hand side entered on y1 and the right hand side entered on y2. And if you have trouble, make sure that you have to arrow over to get out from underneath the radical sign before you put that minus sign in there, because sometimes students make a mistake there. So if I were to go and I was to look at the graph of this function, it starts here, um, kind of at this odd spot, it happens to be at 2, and then we have the straight line which represents y equals 1 crossing it somehow. It's not real clear because I'm not zoomed in. 
I can see that it crosses it, but I don't know much else. So instead, I'm going to go to the table. So I hit second table. Remember, this is where we can enter in the values that we solved for x and find out what happened. So I'm going to delete both of these just to start over. We solved x and we said, well, x was equal to 2 and x was equal to a positive 6. So what happens, there we go, we got both of them in there. If I were to plug 2 into my original equation, the left-hand side must be equal to the right for it to be a solution. And here you can see that that is correct. If I plug 6 in, the left-hand side of my equation equals the right-hand side of the equation. And so since that's the case, 2 and 6 happen to be the solution for this equation. It's a little unclear when you're just looking at the graph because you'd have to zoom in. Oops, let's go this way. You have to zoom in really close to see what's happening here. It's actually kind of crossing here at the, at the, at the originating point, and it also crosses here at 6. So there's our two solutions, and we did check them to make sure that they were, in fact, valid on our radical equations.